So on the left here, we have UEFN, the Unreal Editor for Fortnite. On the right-hand side, we have some verse scripts. I don't know if we call them scripts. It's a verse file, dot verse. And this is going to be the video that shows you what it's like to work with verse and the Unreal Engine for Fortnite as somebody who already knows how to work with programming languages. So because I'm assuming you already have written some programming language in your life, this will be a fairly short video. On the left-hand side here, we have the Unreal Editor for Fortnite. This is the device that we'll create in this video which will run the script on the right minus this if expression that I just kind of wrote in there. <laughs> so there are three things we're going to cover in the video. On the left-hand side, we're going to cover the Unreal Editor for Fortnite, but only for Verse. On the right-hand side, we're going to show you how to get reverse scripts opening in VS Code. And then we also have to show, of course, the client and the environment that Verse will run in for you, which is actually Fortnite. So we'll get to see some of our logs for the program on the right running in Fortnite. Let's get started. So once you open the Unreal Editor, for Fortnite, you'll be able to click featured examples on the left and the verse devices starter on the right. I'm going to name my project my first verse and hit create. I think most interesting for me is this button up here that says open the current project in VS Code. Since I already have VS Code installed, that brings up, of course, VS Code with the typical start menu and a number of verse files. Here we've got a verse hello world. Verse is a language with classes. So in V project, we have some metadata in JSON about the packages that we're using. We have Fortnite, Unreal Engine, and Verse. This is the Fortnite APIs. These are the Unreal Engine APIs. And I believe this includes the Verse APIs like concurrency and things like that. So even without knowing anything about Verse, we can see that we print two plus two. If you know anything about programming languages in general and formatting strings, you can probably assume that this is going to be four. We also print hello world to a console of some kind. There's a nice comment here that informs us that this runs when the device is started in the running game. So all of these verse scripts are attached to devices in Fortnite. And in this case, we call it our hello world device. Up at the top, we have some modules. These are the modules that we just covered on the right-hand side. We've got fortnite.com slash devices and verse.org slash simulation. If we do a command F inside of the verse files, that is the Fortnite digest, we can find the devices module and everything inside of it. So we have documentation just kind of ready to go. Now this isn't like usage documentation, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult if you're trying to figure out how to use things and you don't know verse yet, and all you're doing is looking at these enums or something like that. So we have a verse script attached to a device. You have to go to window content browser, content browser, one of these anyway. It doesn't matter which one as far as I am aware, but you'll find inside of your project name content, creative devices, which is this hello world device that we just looked at. We just saw the verse script for this. And if we want to, we can click and drag this right into the screen. And up here, we can press Alt P or we could just launch the session. This will prompt us to save some stuff, so we'll save. And this, as far as I can tell, actually launches Fortnite. Instead of loading into our main menu or whatnot, we're loading into the edit session for the project that we're running. And you'll see my screen recording flashing up in the top left here. So here we are. I've got the character that was the last character I used in Fortnite. And we're kind of just in our world. If you've ever been in a Fortnite creative world, this is roughly what it looks like. You've got the memory usage at the top for how many items you've placed in the world. And this is the little widget that we've placed to execute our verse script. So if we open the menu with escape and we hit start game, then we spawn in as you would normally spawn in. So for many people, this will be tab. It's not tab for me because I'm running on a moon lander, but that's not relevant. <laughs> so if you look at log, you can see hello world, which is the first print from our VS code session. And then two plus two equals four, which is the second print on line 45, column 28. And if we go back to our dot verse file, we can see print hello world and print two plus two equals four. So we've created a class of uh, creative device, and then we've run some arbitrary verse code. And this is really, as far as I can tell, the only place to run verse code right now. They said that there will be a VM in the future, but there isn't currently a VM. And that VM in the future will be uh, open source and permissibly licensed. So if we want to, I can sit here and go print anything. Hello, YouTube, maybe. And I'll save that. Then we go up here to verse and we do build verse code, which is also control shift B. This green check mark means we're good. So my game actually just ended while I was recording. So I'm going to let it end. In the top left, you can see edit mode push changes to refresh. So back in the editor, we do have to push changes. This is can be done with F5 or by clicking this button. And then the dialogues pop up. They do their thing. Session is updating. If we look at the game while this is sort of uploading, it says preparing in the top left. It reloads. There's a bunch of log messages that you can read if you want to. But at the end, it says success. 
done installing and loading new content, players are no longer frozen. So that's great. Let's start the game. I'll land so there isn't any extra noise. And then we can check the logs. And it says, hello world, two plus two equals four. And our print, anything, hello YouTube. So that's what happens if everything works out. Instead, if we had some syntax issues and I try to build again, we get a build error. We get the location of the error. Auto save was disabled. We click on this. It shows us exactly where the error is, as you can see by this little squiggle here. Then we can fix it, save it, get rid of our message log here and build again. And now we're all green. So that's what it's like to run some verse code, which is super interesting. It's a little bit of a slow workflow, in my opinion. If you edit in VS Code, then you have to build, you have to send it to the client or rather send it to the game instance. And then the game instance has to restart basically. But that's not terribly different from how normal game development works. So we can force the end game here and push changes to refresh. So we're back in the lobby. We've got our device here and it says that there have been changes. So we could push changes to refresh once again and keep doing this and doing this and doing this. So that's what the workflow looks like. I think it's really interesting to see the workflow because it's really strange to hear, hey, Fortnite has a programming language and conceptualize what that means for somebody who knows how to write Rust or JavaScript or any of these other languages like Python. As a professional programmer, you're probably used to having VS Code. You're used to having language servers and editor support and things like that. So I hope this gave you a good insight into what it actually looks like to really use Verse inside of Unreal Engine for Fortnite. The language itself is really interesting. I think that's enough for another video, though. There are tuples and classes. There's advanced programming language features like generics. It's kind of based on a core Lambda calculus. And the way they handle failure and booleans is really interesting. There are transactions where a failure will roll back all the mutable state changes that you've made inside of a block. You have to be sort of explicit about the effects that you want, whether you are writing a block that could fail or writing a block that is async with coroutines or writing something that's more like a drop in Rust with defer. There are, of course, for loops and what looks to me like list comprehensions. There are things we really like from Rust, like option types even. So even if you're not into Fortnite, even if you're not into sort of programming games inside of Fortnite, I think it's really worth taking a look at Verse and evaluating some of the ideas in it if, you know, you've got some free time and you want to. So if you've got questions on Verse, I've written a little bit of it at this point, and I've watched quite a few talks on it. So leave those in the comments, and maybe they'll end up in the next video on Verse. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.